Good evening, good evening, good evening. It is Tuesday, the 30th of April 2013. Where's it going? It's flying past. And the next 30 minutes are going to fly past because you know what it is. It's Vaporscene. Vaporscene is proudly sponsored by Health e Vape, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and e liquid. And I double clicked instead of single click in there and edited my shot as opposed to going live. <laughs> the joys of button pressing. Good evening, it's Mark here with this week's Vapor Scene. And we have got loads coming up in the next 30 minutes. And I'm going to start with some kind of newsish stuff. Um, last week, in fact, in the mirror, um, this was on. Yes, Mr. Simon Cowell has decided to uh, try e cigs. Uh, and um, he tweeted as well this week uh, saying, was it bad for you? And lots of people have tweeted him back saying, no, it's not. It's fantastic and get on with it. Um, but if you read that story, and I suggest you go and have a look online, uh, there's some very strange things in there. Um, it takes water from the atmosphere and, and makes it into vapour. <laughs> I'm not sure where that came from. Uh, but there you go. That was that was quite funny. I saw that earlier on. I thought I'd bring it to you. But I saw Simon Cowell's tweet uh, and I uh, replied to him, as did Daz from Saver Sigs and many other people um, tweeted him to say that it's much better, much better than nipping out uh, in the ad breaks to get a, a sly fag on Britain Scott Talent, etc. <laughs> anyway, some celebrities who are coming on board, it looks like, and... Um, changing, making the change to E6, which is good. So, what else? Hmm, yes, we'll go on to the next segment, because uh, I've got a little, another little news clip it, but I'll play that in the second half after my vapour trails, because I have a, a small rant at the end <laughs> about something. Uh, anyway, so, Saturday show uh, with Andy. Uh, we didn't do the Twitter bomb, but we did some emails. Have you been doing emails? Did you watch the show? Well, if you didn't, this is what happened. Um, a lot of you are probably tuning in because we've got this Twitter bomb thing going. Um, we, this week, are not going to Twitter bomb, but we are going to do something else. Don't go away. Don't go away. We need every single last one of you. So, chat's not going to close, but the lovely people behind the scenes, Sav, is going to post a link into chat right now. And let me show you what that is a link to. It is this new Blogspot website that I've created this week, which has basically got the title, the, the, the video that I put together of um, the Kickstarter promo. Yeah, and if you're listening on the pre-record as well, this is going to be up and around for quite a while. So uh, here we go. So in, in this section, we can go, that uh, takes us to the crowdfunding site, which we can see that's got 138 backers. Thank you very much, everybody. And um, we have also got a thank you page which mentions the pledges. And we've also got a section which has got vapor mail. Let me explain actually. Let me go to the bottom here. You'll see here, down the bottom here there is a link one, a link two, a link three, a link four, and that's it, four links. But underneath, you'll see in pink there, and they're all copy and pasteable, that is a lot of the MEPs, email addresses. So if you click those links, what it will do is it will load your email client up, and it will post that letter that I have written that is quite generic 
Now feel free to add your name at the bottom, but I've kept it generic. Right, I'm going to read it now. With regards to the EU proposal to regulate electronic cigarettes, I would first like to tell you my story. I never wanted to quit smoking. It was a social activity I enjoyed, despite the proven health risks from tobacco smoking. I enjoyed using a nicotine-containing product that was legal, age-restricted, and available in many flavours, pipe tobacco, etc. I now use electronic cigarettes. I'm amazed at how close to smoking the experience was, and within weeks, my morning cough had cleared up and I didn't smell like an ashtray. I remained a happy user of nicotine. As an adult, I chose not to smoke, but to enjoy a flavoured nicotine product which did not burn. Instead, it vaporises liquid nicotine and a few other chemicals which can be found in medical aerosol devices, such as sprays and inhalers. I use 36 milligrams. Again, feel free to change it when it pops up into your email client. I use 36 milligram e-liquid, buy from several UK vendors and have not had any problems with, with the way these items are described or sold. I am confident that these devices do not encourage children to start using nicotine as they are intended for adults, just like alcohol or cigarettes. As I rely on e-cigarettes as my chosen level of as I rely on e-cigarettes and my chosen level of nicotine, 36 milligrams, again change it to your level, but I would suggest you don't change it to anything lower than 18. <laughs> um, I do not wish the EU to dictate or regulate the maximum level, flavour or quantity I can purchase. If the proposed level of 4 milligrams per milliliter of nicotine does occur, I will be back buying and using traditional tobacco cigarettes. The change in law would make me use a proven cancer causing nicotine product which is legal and available widely. <coughs> Cigarettes. I implore you to consider opinions and experiences of these devices by the user on their efficacy and availability. Just like coffee, nicotine is a drug some choose to enjoy. It is your responsibility to hear us and to take action. I respectfully request a considered and personal reply to my points above. Please also take the time to watch a short video that tells our story as electronic cigarette users. And then there's the link to the Our Story Episode 1 video. So, do click those links. Do click those links. But I would suggest maybe stagger it over maybe one or two days. Go back to it, send another batch. But keep a track of which ones you send because you don't want to send the same email over and over again. You know, so, so it's just... It means that you you are sending a certain amount of email to a certain amount of people. Also, if your uh, ISP doesn't allow you to uh, send multiple emails, then those emails are there for you to copy and paste into emails. And, and, you know, by all means, write your own letter. But we just try to make it simple for you just to click a link and it generates an email that you can just quickly send. So, as I said, we're not Twitter bombing tonight, but this is another thing that we really all need to be doing. And there are all the MEP's email addresses. So there we go. If it doesn't work for you when you click on it, it might mean that you've only got webmail. If you've only got webmail, I'm afraid you're going to have to copy and paste those emails into an email and then copy. If you want to use my letter, feel free, change your name, change your nicotine level and then and then send them out. Now, they're going to receive hopefully how many people have we got in chat 107. If we all do it, they're going to receive an awful lot of emails. Now, Next week, we've got another target. We're going to use the same device, you know, the same method using this website. This website is going to be up and it's going to have different pages for different activities that you can all take part in. So that is what we're going to try and do. Because the Twitter bomb is causing a little bit of spam issues and, and our point, although it is, it is making an impact, it's not the only tool in our arsenal. We are going to use lots of different ways of getting the message out there and across an email is actually a legal document. You send it to uh, an MEP or an MP and they have to reply if you request one. And if you if you do do your e own email, please do feel free to nick that la last line of my email that just says, I request, you know, a, a personal considered response because you otherwise you will just get a standard response. What you're asking for is them to engage in the argument. And once they do that, there's not really an argument there, is there? Let's face it. <sighs> Vapor mail. Yes, that was an update from uh, the show on Saturday, and Andy tells me in our little Skype chat that he's currently working on the site, um, and it will be coming back up again because he's adding little bits to it. Um, so keep an eye out, and we will let you know. If you go to the uh, Facebook, here we go. Get the Facebook and the Twitter pages, uh, and follow us. 
uh, then you'll get the updates as and when everything comes back up and line. And of course, there's the Smoke Without Fire Facebook page too, um, which if you go on there, you will see what you need to see. Uh, and I'm just looking up here on the Kickstarter page and in that little video, you saw that the total was 5,700. It's now 11,090 pounds with 158 backers. So well done, everyone. Um, hit the target, over the target, and with 26 days to go, that target is going to be, well, the amount is going to be vastly increased, which is going to allow us and Andy to make some exceptionally good stuff. So well done. Uh, and I was uh, doing a little editing earlier on, and I put a little video together for you. So here is a little video. became aware of a potential EU directive which is of particular concern to this sector. Potentially going to make a, a big mistake if they enforce any bans. The first thing I'd do is go out and buy some more cigarettes. That will be the consequence. There you go. Join the campaign. Be part of the solution, is what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, I've got a question there in chat. Uh, let me just see. Okay, so Winter Rogue, uh, your question to Andy on the coffee juice uh, is from Safe Sigs. So there you go. Get down and get some from Daz. He will sort you out. Uh, Safesigs.co.uk. Have a look there for the juice. Um, okay, we better move swiftly on. And we're going to go to this week's Show Us Yours Gallery. And now it's time for Show Us Yours. Sponsored by Flavor Art UK.
show is yours. Sponsored by Flavor Art UK. And this week's winner is Raymond Burns, who sent in a few photos there, which I've uh, kind of collaged together artistically, he says. Uh, well done, Ray. I will be contacting you via email after the show, and I will tell you how you get your bottle of juice. And if you would like to uh, send me a picture and get in the drawer for a bottle of juice, you know what to do. It's Vapor Scene at vaportrails.tv. Get it into me by 12 o'clock on a Tuesday, and I will put you into the gallery for that week, and you may be winning next week. Who knows? Yes, indeed. So we're going to go to uh, an ad break now, and then when we come back, I've got a little vapor trail from Scotland with a little rant at the end. <laughs> See you in two. Vapor Room is proudly sponsored by Health EV, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and e liquid. in Yorkshire for your ECB. That's iVeber.co.uk and iVeber-Elixir.co.uk. iVeber and iVeber-Elixir.co.uk are proud sponsors of VeberTrails.tv. Now it's back to Vaporseam on Vapor Trails TV. Vaporseam is proudly sponsored by Health e Vapor, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid. And we're back in the room and I've got two cats outside my outside my office door scratching like mad to get in well they're not coming in that's all i'm going to say uh, <laughs> right we're going to go into the car now uh, and um, pick up on a little vapor trail that i did last week on the way back from scotland when i find my video it is there somewhere yes it is there it is okay two seconds see you in a minute Good afternoon. You join me uh, yet again on a return journey back to good old South Yorkshire uh, from Scotland where uh, I arrived on Wednesday and uh, it's now Friday afternoon and I'm heading home. Uh, and you will notice from my uh, background here that I'm no longer in my car that I had, the Rover. I had to trade it in and get a new one uh, because I've done just short of 142,000 uh, in that car and it was time to change uh, before it started costing me way too much money 
to uh, to maintain. So I am now in uh, the new Vauxhall, which is really nice, I have to say. Now, I'm sitting quite nicely uh, at uh, 69 miles an hour with the cruise control on, uh, and uh, it takes the fun out of it a little bit. Um, but on these journeys, um, it is nice just to uh, not have to worry about the accelerator pedal and uh, let it go on its own. But I digress, enough about my new uh, transport issues. And I was going to use my other camera today, uh, like I did last time uh, with the, uh, the two shots and everything, but I was going to use that as my main camera. And I packed it all, I packed my lovely wireless microphone system and had it all ready. And then uh, I went to put it in the car this morning and I'd forgotten to put in the cable that attaches the microphone receiving unit uh, to my video camera. Um, so I didn't bother in the end. So I am just on my iPhone, hmm, which isn't too bad, I guess. But I have a juice in here, uh, which is from Healthy Vape. It's called Coffee Deluxe. Uh, and the bottle is in the back um, so I can't show you that uh, and if memory serves me correct it's a 12 milligram uh, and with all healthy vape juices they are 70, 30, 50 mix um, and it's actually really nice it's got a really nice coffee taste to it taste the coffee on the inhale uh, and I've got this on the Arca T2 um, as always I seem to be using it quite a lot on the Evic which I'm constantly using uh, that and of course the MVP and I've got a 5mm um, Clearo on the MVP uh, with some coconut raspberry coconut ice in um, which is okay but uh, I kind of stopped using it for a while but I filled it up last night I thought I'd give it another go so what's it like well it's very nice it's a real nice coffee taste I have to say goes very nicely with an actual cup of coffee uh, and I have got a cinnamon latte <laughs> with me that I purchased at my last stop um, which is very tasty I have to say uh, and it goes very nicely with a coffee vape um, kind of intensifies the flavour of both things really. um, and that's something that I think I might touch on um, as we go forward through my little video is things that go together well. Uh, you already know that I found that Appletizer, although a very nice, slightly sparkling apple drink, other drinks are available, um, tastes horrible when you vape. Um, and chocolate as well. Eating chocolate vaping, I find, makes it taste not very nice. So, you know, Andy Sutton looks at what goes well beer-wise with vaping. Um, so I should be looking into this a little bit more as I move forward with my little baby child. Um, and I'll bring you, I shall bring you what I discover in uh, future shows. So um, there you go. I managed to catch VT Talk on Wednesday with uh, Dave Dorn and Sam and Jerry Spinson uh, and I was also watching the feed that uh, Dave sent out from half past seven um, of the Envy meeting which was uh, quite interesting. Unfortunately I wasn't able to watch the Hayes Hour last night at my second hotel uh, because the Wi-Fi 
just doesn't support that level of uh, downloading. Um, the first hotel I stayed at in Kilmarna is pretty good, I have to say, uh, because I was on there all night uh, and <laughs> used up um, almost all my battery on my iPad and my iPhone because I was watching the, pro the program uh, on my iPhone and uh, staying in chat on the iPad. Um, so I uh, wore them down quite a lot. I must take an extension lead with me on future trips so I can keep them plugged in. <laughs> so when I get home I will be uh, catching up on Thursday's show. Well, I think that's enough for me this week on my latest Vapor 12. Uh, I will see you back in the studio. Okay, so the last little bit was going to be me back to the studio. But here I am driving down the A1 uh, and I've just heard on Radio 2 a little bit of uh, a news item uh, and it's Anna Suru, who's the Parliamentary Under Secretary of State for Health. And what is she doing? What I said would happen, and that is this. She's now saying to the coffee shops that you are marketing coffee towards children because you are using additives, you're using flavorings like syrups. What is all that about? I mean, I had my coffee, which I finished, which I bought at the services um, about an hour and a half ago, and it had cinnamon syrup in it. Does that mean it's going to be banned? What is this woman doing? Why is she Parliamentary Under Secretary of State for Health when she's now saying that coffee shops are targeting children by using syrups? For goodness sake, Anna Subri, stop! Stop meddling! Stop trying to nanny us. Don't muck about with the, the e-cigarette flavourings and e-cigarettes in the Tobacco Products Directive. Get that out of it. And stop trying to meddle in other things like us wanting a coffee with a flavoured syrup. Just stop it. Rant over. <laughs> Did you like my rant at the end? Oh, I was livid when I heard that story. Uh, and here is the story. There we go. Anna Subri is saying that um, coffee shops are targeting young children uh, with their whipped cream on, on uh, hot chocolate and in coffee and they don't understand how many calories are in them, etc, uh, etc. Et have a look, Google that and have a look at the full story because it is rather interesting. Now, I have to say, in her defence, um, because that was a rant at the time. I've looked at the story and what she's saying is that if you have the signature hot chocolate with all the bells and whistles on it and a cookie, it's actually 500 calories more than a Big Mac meal. <laughs> so there is a little bit of sense in what she's saying. However, um, the fact that coffee shops sell this kind of stuff to adults doesn't necessarily mean that a load of kids are going to spend their hard-earned pocket money, you know, five, six, seven pounds on a coffee and a biscuit. Um, I don't think so. But anyway, I was rather annoyed at the time. Um, but if she tries to take away my cinnamon flavouring from my coffee, ooh, there'll be hell to pay. <laughs> anyway, there you go. Have a look at the story because it is uh, it's quite interesting. Um, <laughs> so I'm just getting distracted by our chat there. Right, so I'm almost out of time. Let me just tell you what's happening on tomorrow night's uh, VT Talk. Dave has got the uh, the latest information from uh, the MEP um, emails and I've had loads of replies to the emails I sent by the way. Um, some of them have been the same from each each particular brand of M MEP um, because they've been sending the same thing out um, but I have had some more personalised replies uh, and a lot of them asking me for my name and address or my address details um, because as you know if you're not in their constituency they don't really have to do anything but they should then pass on to the uh, MEP that is in your constituency. Um, so he'll be updating you on that. He's got a little bit of video for you as well. Thursday, we've got the haze hour and it looks like Keith is going to be back clutching a large bottle of vanilla custard and an EVOD, quite possibly. So tune in tomorrow night and Thursday night. 
Andy is back again on Saturday with the next recipient of the um, vapor mail. Yes, the uh, vapor mail. The vapor mail. <laughs> and I'll be uh, looking at that next week. Sunday, of course, is Dave's Tackle Box. Monday is Tin Your Tip. I am back next Tuesday with Vapor Scene. And until then, happy vaping. Peace out. Vape on and vape hard. Scene is proudly sponsored by Health Evape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid.